Hi there, I'm back again this week to talk to you about personal item pieces of luggage that you can use for a budget carrier. Now, I actually fly out of a regional airport, so I don't have a great deal of options when it comes to inexpensive flights. However, there is one budget airline, Allegiant, that I love flying with because they actually make a direct flight to Orlando when I have to go there. So with that being said, I decided to try a one bag travel experiment. I don't know that I've ever been able to do this. And unfortunately, my regional airport does not have the sizer bins. My regional airport has stickers on the ground. Now, what concerns me about that is that when I get to Orlando and I have to come back, they do have sizers. And the last time I was able to escape that a little bit, <laughs> so I didn't actually have to go put my bag in the sizer. But this time I'm realizing that it's probably a really good idea to, especially because I'm only taking one bag this time. I'm not, I'm not taking a personal item plus a carry-on bag to be put in the overhead bin. I'm literally taking the 18 by 14 by 8 size. Now in my previous video, I used this Zomfelt bag to actually show you how I was going to pack it. Now, truth be told, I have not yet taken that trip because I actually got my dates mixed up. So I was completely confused about what month I was going and even my capsule wardrobe was for the month I was actually filming in and I was looking so forward to it and then, duh, I realized this isn't the right month. So, and, and I have quite a bit of travel planned and various things scheduled. So it just, I just got mixed up and I was so excited about filming the video because I managed to get everything in one bag that I just had to talk about it. Well, as I have taken a couple of weeks now, more than a couple of weeks, several, several weeks to actually think this through, I realized that using this bag may not be the best idea. So I ordered another bag and this is by Crozer and I think a lot of people have done videos on this. Of these two bags I actually like this one better. I, I can't explain exactly why except for it just it goes with my aesthetic better and then I also like the fact that it has different you know outside pockets and it's a little bit elevated because of the stitching that happens to be on this on this bag and <laughs> there's a plane flying overhead this is kind of funny while this one i guess does have similar stitching i i just i, I also like the fact that this one is more square so it's actually easier to pack like a suitcase whereas this one is slightly rounded at the top more like a, a traditional backpack 18 by 14 by 8 is the new standard personal item size for Allegiant. So um, I could have taken this bag. Now it does weigh about 2.5, almost 3 pounds. And, and it, it, it is pretty weighty. It does have the, it's not a backpack. It is, is shaped like a backpack, but it does have this carry handle, right, that pops up. So on the interior of the luggage, you have those kind of three divots or the, the, you know, the different shaped cavity. So I had that to contend with. And when it was fully packed, even though what I was, because this is right at the limit of the 18 by 14 by 8, what I really was concerned about is even though it was the right size height, it was the right size width wise the depth of it is the problem and it is also a problem with some my new idea which i'll share with you in a minute instead of eight inches it ends up being nine i think part of that is because of gravity so it's pulling you know the items down and kind of making it more chubby but what i was really concerned about is that because this has a hard back on it because it has the wheels that if 
potentially this was not seated just right in a sizer that I was going to be charged exorbitant luggage fees on my way back home. So then I ordered this Crozer bag that people have talked about. I really do like the aesthetic of it. I am returning both of these, incidentally. Um, I've tested them and I and I've saved the tags, but uh, they are not, it's just not going to work um, for my for my purposes. Now, this one also has this nice adjustable handle and it has the luggage uh, handle divots in the interior of the luggage. So it greatly decreases the amount of packing space that you have because of that. Now, I do love having a bag that's on wheels. There's just something about that, even having to use the restroom in the airport instead of having to kind of struggle and try to figure out a place, clean place to put your backpack. Let's say if you're doing one bag travel with just a backpack, not all restrooms have hooks on the doors. And then I do carry a hero clip with me, but sometimes I really have to go to the bathroom. So dancing around and fooling around with a hero clip and trying to get it out of my bag and trying to hang my bag up and all this is actually a little stressful for me. And, and I have with international travel, sometimes that's the only choice I've had. So I'm, I'm familiar with that. So I was really looking for an 18 by 14, eight bag that had wheels that would actually work. Um, unfortunately, this was the same problem. The expansiveness this way was more like actually 10 inches because this bag is actually an inch shorter than the uh, Zomfelt bag. And so that did not, this bag did not work either. So I already have this bag. <clears throat> and this is 18 by 14 by 8. It is by Travel Pro. It is a regional carry on bag, is how it's referenced. A bit pricey, but I do love this bag and I use it a lot because I'm in a regional airport. So it makes it easier for me to be able to actually carry this on instead of having to gate check it. It also has the handle here, which means it has the two divots on the inside. And the interior cavity is quite small because Travel Pro, I think they're a lot more, more concerned about durability, whereas I don't know, some of the less expensive, maybe luggage makers are, are not as concerned. But I, I will say that this bag, and I will show you the inside as soon as I snap this back in here. So it does come with a toiletry bag, which is nice. And then it has these two compression straps that kind of come down and it has these additional flaps so that you could put something, you know, in those, those little pockets, which is nice. But it is really tiny inside with these divot spaces and hopefully you're able to see. So, and when I packed this one, this also came up at nine inches in depth. It was still 18 by 14, but it was nine. So again, thinking about what's going to happen when I'm in the Sanford airport, when I'm coming home, are they going to make me put this in a sizer? And what happens if, because of the fact that this has wheels, that it's not going to fit? Again, I'm just trying to be prepared because my local airport just has stickers on the ground. And as long as it pretty much fits in the stickers, they let you go because it's a regional airport. So I thought, okay, what about trying to find a bag very similar to maybe the bento bag that is, has been well advertised and people have done a lot of video on. And the Bag Smart line has been pretty popular. So I decided to try this bag. Now, um, it does have a shoulder strap. It does have this, you know, nice, uh, pocket in the front. It does also have this nice pocket in the back that you can uh, trolley strap, but it's nice too that you have a place for passport or tickets or cash or whatever, maybe even your cell phone would fit there. Um, it is similar to the bento bag, although 
it is a, it just opens this way. Uh, so it kind of opens like a traditional older style suitcase, right? And you can put your laptop here or similar to a brief, an old style briefcase. Um, it is nice that it has these kind of compartments. There is a kind of a waterproof bag in here as well. The other nice feature is the main compartment is you can access it from the top of the bag instead of also having to completely open the suitcase or the bag. But once I packed everything I had in this bag, and it was, I think I told you guys before, because I'm using basically the same exact thing, although I did change my capsule wardrobe slightly, taking kind of all the same items that I took before in, in my previous video, the bag did not feel sturdy. I think the materials are a little bit lower quality. Obviously at this price point, you know, I, it's definitely under $100. I'm sure that that's part of it. You know, the material quality can't be top notch at that price point. But what was really concerning to me was that I just felt like maybe these straps were not completely secure or because it's essentially 20 pounds of personal items that I'm carrying with me, I was very unsure about how well this would hold up. It does definitely have some nice features. I was actually surprised that um, this is all metal. You know, the, there's a metal D-ring as well as the metal hook, but just, I don't know, you have to go with your gut or your intuition, I suppose, that that just really concerned me. It just didn't feel as sturdy as some of the other pieces of luggage that I normally carry. So, and this is actually quite funny that I'm, that I'm even, after saying all of that, I've actually had terrible poison ivy for the last couple of weeks. I'm finally healing up. I have a, a lot of really bad places, but I had some downtime, considerable amount of downtime. There wasn't a whole lot I could do. And so I decided I was going to go through all of my travel gear and measure the bags that I already had. So I measured all of the bags that I did have and this one actually fit the bill. This is an East Sport bag and I believe that you can find these at Walmart. I actually traded someone uh, for a, a backpack that I had that was really flowery. They liked it and wanted my flowery backpack. I didn't hardly ever use it, didn't even care about it. And this is what they offered me. So I decided, well, sure, it's a plain black, you know, backpack that, I, and I didn't really care. I would have given them the, the flowery backpack <laughs> anyway, but I took this on trade, so I'd never used it, never, didn't really know much about it, didn't know much about the brand. I will say this, it is in about the same kind of quality as this Bag Smart tote bag. Again, I'm experimenting because I have never traveled with only one bag, but the interesting thing is all the other bags that I I packed, or the majority of them, had the luggage handle, so it took up a lot more space. Now, this bag, without a luggage handle, it is a true backpack, so I do have to actually carry this on my back, which, you know, 20 pounds is 20 pounds, and that's okay. It's actually not bad. And it's comfortable, which was also very surprising to me. I thought, oh, this is a cheap backpack. I bet it's not going to be comfortable. It actually is. Now, would I take this to Italy for a two-week trip? No, there's no way. It is, the material is really too thin. Also, I haven't tested it. I have no idea how it would do. But I do feel like going for a four-day trip to meet with friends and go to meetings, I'm just going to be in one place. I feel like this bag will actually allow me to do my experimentation and I'm not going to have to put as much in my Scotty vest. In my previous video, I talked to you about, you know, making sure that I would load up my Scotty vest and then I could travel with, you know, one bag travel. 
and that's true I could and another thing that's nice is not having to put everything in the Scotty vest on my way back if for example this doesn't fit in the sizer just right maybe it's a half an inch too long or something I can take my water bottle out and I can actually put that in my Scotty vest pocket so it's nice actually just kind of knowing that I have that that backup and also now this does also this bag also measures nine inches even though it measures at like seven and a half once it's filled it does measure at nine inches however because it has such a padded back on it it will scrunch down to eight inches tested it and i believe of all the bags that i've tried now this will make it in the sizer now i'm just going to kind of give you a quick overview of what's here so you can see how much this will squash down and I've strategically kind of packed everything so even if I have to mash it down in there I'm not worried about you know breaking anything or there being any any issues at all so this actually measures at 13 inches this direction so I put my umbrella in this side pocket and then I also have a hat a sun hat in this side and I think from before when, when I did the previous video and then the follow-up um, capsule wardrobe, I don't believe that, I, I can't remember if I was able to take a hat or not, but this folds up so small that it, it will, and it's, it's squishable. So I don't feel terrible, you know, about putting that on the outside. But the bottom line is with a hat, if I'm going up against a, an Allegiant gate agent and they're telling me that my my bag is you know one inch too wide this direction I can always take the hat out of the pocket and just wear it so and this is the little ribbon that goes around the hat I actually made this this afternoon it's kind of fun I put a snap on it and it has a snap this way as well and then this snap will snap actually onto the hat so it, uh, that's how I'm I'm decorating my my hat so that it looks a little bit more elevated and then I can wear it with the ribbon or without the ribbon depending on what I choose and my wardrobe is still black and white my capsule wardrobe okay so just like these other bags Mr. B would you please go someplace else or honey it's a honeybee it really is a honeybee I don't I don't have anything for you I have nothing for you oh dear okay I think we're gonna have to take a commercial break until you're finished okay I have a bee who keeps being very persistent so hopefully it's a honeybee so typically they're not aggressive so but hopefully I can kind of get through this so one of the things that I noticed multiple times over and over again and I've also anytime you travel and you're having to put a piece of luggage under the seat you don't want to put much of anything in these front pockets even though they're great to put things for organization I'm only using something that's very flat to put in here because I don't and in fact I don't think I have anything in this pocket at all because I don't want to add to the girth of this backpack now this section is potentially for laptops but I put only flat things in here so you know I always tra I always travel with one of these emergency sink plugs so I always have that I carry my shoe cleaning cloth I have a Starbucks bag in here I have my grocery shopping bags and also a space bag maybe for dirty clothes on the way back again for saving space and then um, my handy dandy valet tray that you guys have seen multiple, multiple times. So anything that's flat, that's what I'm carry or putting in this kind of laptop or uh, tablet area. And 
And then I told you about the two side pockets. Now, the other nice thing, and this is kind of a, a really cool feature, and I really wish that other, other luggage companies like this would consider it, but it makes your packing so much easier. In fact, there's a new, I think it's Bays maybe, that has come out with a small cabin bag just here in the last couple of weeks. And, and everybody's saying, oh, it's so great. It doesn't have the expander on it, but you, you don't want it to have the expander because then it won't fit in the overhead bin. Let me tell you, the nice thing about this expander, I don't look at the expander for necessarily bringing additional luggage back with me. What I like is when I'm actually packing. I can pack the luggage a little bit easier kind of position everything how I want it to be and then almost like compression bags like a compression packing cube I can actually compress the luggage and that's one thing that I would actually say that I don't like about that travel pro suitcase the little regional suitcase I have it's because it doesn't have that feature and it would make things so much easier when packing everything, get it all positioned, and then kind of ratchet things down and compress. Would just be, it'd be a real game changer in my opinion. Now, another, with, with the positives, there are some negatives then about this bag. And that is, it does pack like a traditional backpack, right? So I have gifts for my, the girlfriends in here will do some masks, and then I have the everything else, my water bottle, my kettle, my thermos, because I like to have my coffee or tea in the morning, and all the other things that I'm taking that you've seen in a previous video. So the only thing that's changed is the addition, actually, of these things. The other nice thing is I didn't have to pack the Scotty vest as much. I really like that because I feel like now everything that I have is in this bag. Everything is pretty much the right size. And I'm very, very confident that this will pass the sizer test. Thanks for being here today. Thanks for watching me go through all of these, these pieces of luggage. Now, I do have one really big ask of you. I am trying very hard to reach 1,000 subscribers because I would like to monetize my channel. I really want to continue doing this, but the only way I can do that is if I have 1,000 subscribers. You guys have been so kind to watch all the videos that I have, and I've, I've met the watch hours, but what I'm lacking now is subscribers. So please, please click that subscribe button. If you would like to be notified when I post videos, you'll click the bell button as well. And I promise not to bombard you with too many pieces of content because to be honest, my schedule just doesn't allow it. But I would love, love, love to be able to continue making videos and sharing my packing secrets with the world. So the only way I can do that is if I have your help. Anyway, thanks again for being here. Thank you so much for being a part of this community and for watching the videos and commenting and being so engaging. I think that's what I like so much about doing this is that I always have comments from everyone and it's really wonderful and lovely. So this is the bag I'm using. I will be taking pictures of the bag in the sizer at the airport in Orlando because we don't have a sizer where I am, but I will make sure to let you know how this works. The other thing I'm going to do is probably have my measuring tape out or in my pocket. And I'm thinking about measuring the sizer exactly and possibly making my own sizer out of lumber. I have a ton of lumber for my, my work. And, and so I have a lot of scrap pieces and I thought, okay, this could be a thing. I could, I could make a sizer for myself. And then we can actually test some of these bags a little easier than um, me having to fly to another city to use the sizer there. <laughs> so <laughs> stay tuned for that. There's more to come. Take care and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.